We used to have a compost bin, but it died. And this one has kind of a cool concept behind it. We're gonna upcycle our stuff. And this one has kind of a cool twist. We're gonna upcycle our organic stuff reuse. Come on, Mark. We're gonna reuse our organic stuff from inside in a compost bin that's made of reused compost. God! Do you want me to try it? No, I got it. We, <laughs> this compost bin is made out of <laughs> Oh, I'm out, I can't. Today we're building a new compost bin to replace the one that died. And we've chosen a material that's made out of rice husks, so it's super sustainable. And the first step is figuring out how big we want it to be. Now we've already chosen this part of the yard for it, nice little corner. I think about 24 by 36 would be good, give or take a little bit. So the first step, well, we have to go cut boards. You get acre at a professional lumber yard. This isn't a big box store item. Now, chances are pretty high that a good lumber yard will break the 16 foot length these deck boards come in down to a more manageable length for you to get on your truck or in your car or whatever. If they don't, however, and this DIY tip generalizes, if you have long boards and you need a lot of short cuts, so I need a bunch here that are 24, 24, 48, and so on, I'm just gonna pull my tape at 50. Make this cut where there's nothing at stake. That way, the boards are easier to manage, you can get more accurate cuts. And you're not really wasting any material. The next bunch of steps we're gonna show you lead us here. This is our mitered corner post, and this is a nailing flange, even though we'll use screws, a nailing flange to put our field pieces on. So we'll show you the miters, we'll show you the connections, we'll show you the assembly details, and that's what we're doing right now. Step one of corner post assembly is putting the mitered pieces together. Lots of different ways you can do this. I prefer to use my miter saw as a backstop. And if you don't have a narrow crown stapler, well, I think you should. And you know what? I'll wait. I'm not gonna wait. So using the miter saw and my work table, what I wanna do is get these nice and square, then upside down, pinky grab, I'll freeze that miter. If I'm gonna try to blow screws and stuff in here now, something's gonna move. I just need to tack it. And I love using a narrow crown stapler for that activity. Okay, that's the first layer. The anatomy of the fastening flanges is this. It's one deck board ripped in half, so it's two and three quarters, and it's another one that's one and three quarters. That way, when Teresa puts them together, each leg is the same length as the other leg, and it's proportional. It's a compost bin. We're not building a piano. Does this have to be perfect? No. Is it good practice for DIY and other projects? Yeah. What we're doing here is making the theory, which was Teresa and I doing the math earlier to get our corner post height, match reality. We assumed at the theoretical math stage, five and a half, 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 one, 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 and added all that up. It's not exactly Euclidean geometry, but things can change. Like maybe the boards aren't what we assume they would be. So what we do instead to make the theory match reality is test it out in reality. And that gives us 31 and a half on the nose. So getting our 31 and a half from our test over there to the corner posts over here starts with squaring up one end of the corner posts. And all that takes is just a sliver cut on the miter saw.
Now this is flush, we can measure 31 and a half. and make the cut. We're ready to start building the side panels. And there are a couple of things going on here that are worth taking a pause to show you. First, it's no accident that our work table is a piece of plywood. It's got a nice straight factory edge and I've lined up the bottoms of my legs to match up the edge of the plywood. Secondly, we can't forget that acre is composite decking. And as a general rule, composite decking expands and contracts, unlike wood, along its length. Wood goes this way, composite goes this way. So that this thing doesn't grow together, we want to leave a space for the material to move over time. Secondly, Teresa has a spacer here and here and we're gonna move up to screws in a second, but while this piece is mobile, we're just gonna freeze it with staples, then we move on. Okay, now it's time to connect the dots. We're gonna attach our side panels to our side panels via the front panels. So Teresa's bringing in the other side panel. The main thing I'm thinking about here is I really want square here. We'll get that side panel in, give it a little gap. That looks about right. I started some screws so there's no wrestling match here. Double check it. That's money. Looking good, babe. Now we can just build this in place. We'll get our long side boards. We'll use spacer blocks and we'll go to town. What we're doing here is we've got the box stitched together. Now, we're gonna install this top piece first. We've got the bottom one in and square. If these flare at all or anything, I wanna know now before I've installed all of these. So if we need to make a little squeezy, something like that, we get our reveal just right. To keep it from being a wrestling match, we started screws on the bench. And just like that, cool. Now we can use our spacer blocks and install from the bottom up. So here's the anatomy of the lid. We have our first piece in, which is fixed on the compost bin. These are the parts that will travel. So what we're essentially doing is we laid it out on top of the compost bin to make sure everything fit. Then we brought it over here, recreated all that, and now we're gonna put in the balance of the planking. These struts have a 22 and a half degree bevel off the front. That way, when this is on a diagonal arc, the arc's not diagonal, but this would be on a diagonal when it's an arc. Anyway, the point is, this has room to move. Now what we want to do is exactly what Teresa is doing. Butt these ends up to our squares. Mm -hmm. Looks good. Okay. And these are straight enough. I'm going to use the plywood just to make sure we're straight, straight. Six and three quarters. Tell me when I can fasten it. Well, do what I'm doing so that your strut is straight. Measure in off the plywood to the strut. Yep. Okay. 
It's tempting to put the screws in here where you've been putting them all the way across, but look, there's nothing underneath it. So you have to back off the second screw so that it hits meat underneath. The other thing about screwing all this together, we're using a number eight, number eight by two inch screw for everything, is the acre takes a countersink beautifully and the shank of the screw, because it sets up so tight, it just draws everything into square, draws flat edges flat to each other, all around good stuff. I got into a habit early on of gapping all my hinged openings such that if something's a little out of whack, I've got a little space here to keep the moving part and the fixed part from binding together. That's called being hinge bound. Is this ready to go? Uh, I have no idea. Oh. Yeah, it's ready to go. It's right there, right there, ready, ready? to go. Ready to go? Ready to go. Ready to go. Whoops, not ready to go. I like to put the barrel right over the gap. You're gonna come over here, when I tell you to, you're just gonna push it towards me. Okay, don't try to lift it up. Push it towards me. I'm gonna lean back. Does that make sense? One, two, three, go. Yep. Yes. Yes. Now, don't let go. Things we compost. Melon rinds. Pinopla. Coffee grounds. The toilet paper roll. Nanners. Eggshells. Orange you glad I didn't say banana? Whatever the ends of beets are called. Avocado pit. Eww. That bag of spinach we said we would eat. Celery. Browns. All the news that's fit to compost. Close her up. We're back in the compost bin game with our acre by Modern Mill compost bin. And now Mother Nature takes over. Thanks for watching.